What's going on? Ryan Troy back with another video for you today. And today is a special one. I have Becky and Cons of Greys of Westminster joining me. Now, I hope that I said that right, because a little while ago I messed it up. So Greys of Westminster. I said that right, right? You did. Well done. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be a judge of these bags. I am the judge <laughs> of all pronunciations everywhere. Yeah. Well done. That Thank was perfect. You. I'm happy that you guys are here, guys and gals, are here to join me today. Um, as I was speaking with you with you two just a little while ago, I was telling you that I thought that y'all were the owners of Greys. So <laughs> now that it's I found amazing. out <laughs> now that I found out that y'all aren't, um, can you just give me a little bit about the company and what you guys do at the company? Yeah, absolutely. So um, Con and I both started about the same time, same year. Uh, so we've been here for 13 years, I think it is now. Oh gosh, is that that it's much? It's that long. Wow, um, nice. And we, both, we started sharing a desk, actually. Was <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> long, firm friendship. Yeah, it was a standing desk as well. <laughs> so you have a bar stool, and, or otherwise you would have to stand like this as well. So it was a <laughs> tiny desk in a yeah. tiny corner which we had to share. Yeah, absolutely. And um, we both kind of started on sales. Uh, and technical and then kind of built up from there. Uh, Con runs the whole kind of technical division now and uh, okay. does repairs and everything. And, and I'm the general manager. So I just generally manage things. <laughs> nice. So when did yeah. you two get into photography? Gosh, well, I can remember. <laughs> I can remember so when I did. You were born with a camera in your I hands? I was born with a camera. No, I used to nice. take a camera to school with me, um, which wasn't allowed. But uh, it was usually some kind of point and shoot film thing. And then I think, I mean, I got my first proper camera when, just before I started working here, actually, because my mum got me a, a D200. Mm. But I was working for a magazine before that and I start, I learned oh, wow. digital photography on a D100. So um so yeah, that was my and that was what 15 years ago. Nice. Yeah, right. And I'm going to tell you my whole life story then. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um well, I literally started self photography when I was about 13, 14 years old at school and then my whole point is I always want to study photography and I'm from a small town in Russia which like even in Moscow and St. Petersburg, you really didn't have many universities mm. that did photography courses or anything. So I went to United States to New York for summer when I was, I think, about 19 years old. And I bought my first Nikon there or Nikon, as you guys say, um, F100. Right. Uh, when I came back from New York, I just kind of spent two months in Russia and I said, yeah, that's not happening. I'm going to go somewhere. And London was the closest English speaking place. Right. So I booked myself a photography course and, um, you know, moved to London. And then since then I'm here and it's all kind of took over. You know, when I graduated, then I got the job at Grace of Westminster as well. So and started to freelance at the same time. So it's kind of went one thing after another and snowballed into this thing, which is called YouTube nowadays. Yeah, The rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> that is nice. Now, when I first discovered your channel, it was something that made me subscribe ASAP before I even watched a single video. And it was <laughs> the motto of the company, which was exclusively Nikon. Okay. Mm -hmm. So... To me, that is a very bold statement, especially on YouTube, because my me myself, I feel like um, I, I had boxed myself in a, a corner, a small corner. And I know that you can grow on YouTube, you know, speaking Nikon, because you have people like Matt Granger that did it. You know, it's, yeah. it's so many uh, photographers that, you know, shot exclusively Nikon and still went up. But I personally... Um, I felt struggles with it, but I'm new. So basically what I want to know is before working at Grays, were y'all also exclusively Nikon? It's a good question. Um, I definitely was. Uh, okay. I've dabbled in a few other brands since I have. I've, and also obviously film cameras. I've got more than just Nikon film cameras. Yeah, we have our soft spots. Yeah, for, for other brands. But <laughs> Um, but I, I really learned on Nikon cameras. Yeah. So that for me, yes. I don't know. I mean, I know that's not the case for everybody. What about you? Um, well, my first camera was my father's Zenit. Uh, yeah. So, you know, in Russia, you don't really, you know, the cameras, Japanese cameras were quite expensive and they weren't around in Soviet Union. So, so I had my father's Zenit, which I took with me to New York and it failed within a month. And mm. friend of mine, um, you know, 
um, who I met there, but he was from my town as well and immigrated a long time ago. He used Nikon and, um, you know, I was saving up for the whole summer to buy my F100 and I bought it in Adorama, uh, spent my $600, which was a lot of money for me at the time. Yeah. And I didn't know that you actually had to add tax on top of this. And then <laughs> I got, you know, it's like, it's another hundred dollars, you know? <laughs> anyway, so my first professional camera was Nikon and uh, I had Nikon since then. We've dabbed in different brands. I used Fuji. Um, I used my Mi medium format cameras for my personal work. But as a commercial tool, Nikon was always my main camera. So yeah. even let's say when when I always say, let's say we, we talked about Z series cameras mm. before Z9. And I always say, well, D850 is my professional tool. It's, it's there to do the work. And then I use other cameras for leisure. And then in this case, it would be something like Z, Z6. But yeah. as a professional tool, Nikon was my main camera all the time. Yeah. Nice. Now let's move forward. So with all the anticipation of the Z9 and it's been a lot of coverage. If you were a channel on YouTube and covered the Z9 through all of this, I think everybody's seen growth because everybody was so interested in this camera. Yeah. Now that we know what it is and the specs and everything like that, do you think that it will change the market at all? What's your thoughts on that? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's we luckily we had the chance to try the camera. Um, and uh, one thing we've noticed, we took it out and to do some bird photography. And I'm a portrait photographer. I don't do wildlife. And it was just so easy to track the subject and the movement. I just found it to be too easy. And I said it was like a cheat code in the video game where <laughs> you just hold the airphone button pressed. And right. it tracks it, and it tracks it so fast. And yeah. then you shoot at 20 frames per second, you, it's, it's just too easy. And it was what I was say 95% of the shots were keepers. Yeah. That's right. how good it is. And then think about this way. Yeah, like you into portraiture as well. So, you know, mm. think about this way. I didn't trust eye tracking on Z series cameras before. I'm a single focus point guy, keeps it in the middle, or if I do a lot of studio stuff in a portrait mode, then I move it up a little bit to, you know, towards the eyes. That's how I would shoot. I, right. you know, I wouldn't use eye tracking or anything like this. Now it's that night is the first camera that I can trust. And as I say, you can literally keep it on AFC, have air phone button press all the time and just press shot this button to take the shot. This is a fundamentally different way of taking photographs. Right, right. I definitely think it will change the way a lot of photographers take pictures. I remember a, a week before the Z9 came out and we had that little trial run, we went and shot some wildlife. And at the end of the day, Con said, yeah, this is not for me. This is not my forte at all. Yeah. But then we put the Z9 in your hands a week later and he was like, oh, I can do this now. So I think it will change. <laughs> I would, it will change a lot of people's photography. Wildlife photography is easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, they've and, been sitting in hides for hours yeah. on end and then suddenly the camera just picks up the bird. I mean, it is it is phenomenal how accurate it is. And we were using a pre-production model. So um, so I'm, I'm very excited about that. I think that this was extremely huge for the wildlife scene. I, I get a yeah. lot of comments from wildlife uh, photographers and action photographers as well. And me, you know, I do portraiture as you as you stated. Um, so the problems that we had were kind of different because I'm used to just having a person still and it's kind of easy. So I shoot with the Z7 too. So I never really realized the the problems that other people were having um, mm -hmm. So when I spoke about it, I always spoke like, oh, this is on par with all of these other cameras. But, you know, I, I didn't know about the wildlife. But just looking at this, it looks like it'll be an amazing camera for, you know, wildlife photographers. So, you know, I'm pretty sure that they are excited. Now, let's move yeah. into my next topic being the original Z mirrorless cameras just got a recent update. Now, I personally got rid of my original z6 to upgrade it to the z62 which i do all of my uh video stuff on including shooting myself right here um <laughs> with that being said do you think that the z72 and the z62 cameras will have some type of firmware update to not put it exactly on par with the z9 but at least a little bit there because it was rumors mm. I don't know if you remember the September rumor oh, yeah, yeah. that we were yeah. right. And I got my hopes up and it never came. 
And then we got yeah. this recent firmware update that had nothing really to do with eye autofocus or tracking. What are your thoughts on? I, I don't know if you have any NDA that you can't spill any secret <laughs> tea. <laughs> yeah, no, we, right. no, we don't. Um, I do. I do think that, I mean, we've just been reading through the firmware update for the Z6 and Z7 and having mm -hmm. a look at the differences and kind of discussing what that's going to mean. We're both still Gen 1 shooters. We have a Z6 II yep. for our filming, but for just, uh, you know, day-to-day -day shooting, I use the Z6 almost exclusively. Um, and I think that that's putting the Z6 and Z7 on par with the 6.2 and the 7.2 in terms of I... AF accuracy, obviously it doesn't have a dual processor, so there are going to be hardware limitations yeah. and that's right. going to be the case with the 6.2 and the 7.2 moving up to the Z9, there's there's always going to be a difference because there's physically a difference with the with right. the cameras, with, with the processor, um, with the uh, autofocus capabilities, even with the sensor, that all those things make a difference. Um, but I think that they could tweak it for sure. I think that there's a possibility there yeah. that we will see some tweaks. Okay. I don't know if yeah. you've got more to add to that. Well, <laughs> I have different thoughts on this. I've uh, First of all, I love this continuous love and support of uh, all the generation cameras. Mm. Uh, Nikon has become new Fuji Kaizen. You know, when the Fuji used to update their cameras quite frequently, yeah. a lot, in, like three years ago. They don't do it as often anymore now, but mm -hmm. they used to do that. And we see Nikon with their Z system keep iterating the new firmwares pretty much on, let's say, B-monthly basis. Mm. So, yeah, we've just got the updates uh, for the first generation cameras. Uh, a lot of people report and they say they, they're almost becoming as good as Generation 2 cameras. Now, right. obviously, we've got Generation 2 cameras and we've got Z9. Now, there, I think some good news and bad news. The bad news is that Z9 process is much, much faster. Yeah, so it's, a lot of people say it's almost like six, seven times faster than, than process on Z6 and Z2 generation, uh, Z6 and Z7 and the Generation 2 cameras. So we could have a hardware limitation. Mm -hmm. So some of it may not trickle down as well as, let's say, it would trickle down into new generation Mark III cameras. Mm. The good news is, since we've seen the updates of the Mark I cameras, we can see that they keep updating the software. So software development be becomes very important yes. nowadays. And a lot of this software development that went into what's focus of Z9 already trickled down into Mark generation one cameras. Mm. I'm sure it will trickle down to generation two cameras. So whatever they can implement via software that is not taxing on the processor, we will see that. But I think the major leap you will start seeing probably Mark three cameras or Z8. Yeah. Right. I want to jump in on what you said because I had a video that I spoke about that. And to me, that is 100% correct when you said software, right? When, when you speak about that. And the reason why I say that is we look at the internals of the Z9 and it is insane what it can yeah. do uh you got to keep in mind it shoots 8k it does and and it, for how long was it a uh, 120 minutes i want to say yeah. yeah that's insane yeah. so yeah. a lot of people look at the processor that's supposed to be like seven times um faster and they think that all right well this is the reason why the eye autofocus could be there but i don't see that i see that's the reason why I could shoot 8K at 120 and all of these other things. When I look right. at how advanced Sony cameras were with their tracking abilities and all of that, I don't think that they had any type of process as strong as the Z9 and was able to do that. So that's why mm -hmm. I personally feel maybe it could be a software thing because when you look at the dual process processors of the Z7, I feel if Sony could do it, and they've been doing this for so many years, even with, you know, cameras that weren't professional grade cameras with their mm -hmm, tracking right. and eye autofocus the z67 the z72 and z62 their internals are still strong it's still first year I oh mean. yeah so I, yeah, I, I, that's why i think you know that's just I think there's more potential to be right, reached right. there <laughs> right yeah. yeah i mean we don't exactly. want 8k but yeah just no. <laughs> yeah but, but that's the thing we asked Richie um, on friday and he said he didn't say anything that they're going to release it, but he said, well, look, the Mark 1 software firmware just came out. So I guess it's a good sign that the, you know, Mark 2 generation cameras will get their firmware soon. Yeah. Right, right. Hopefully, 
I, I, I'm saying I'm going to speak it to existence. I am saying by January, we should get okay. firmware 2.0. That's what I'm hoping because that would a nice be Christmas great. present. It would be right. right. Yeah. Because we're still in the first year. So we're still on firmware one point something, something. So yeah. mm -hmm. I say year two firmware 2.0 big things. Hopefully that happens. We are speaking this into existence. Now I got okay. one more question and I'm going to let you guys go. Okay. Are you ready for this? <laughs> Yes. Now, I'm not sure because this is something that I'm excited about and I just and I hope that this is a thing. So, you know, it's a lot of people that speak about potentially having a Nikon Z8, right? Like right. the Z9 is not it. And this is, <laughs> <your> what, camera. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we're going to ride the next rumor and anticipation wave into going yeah. forward since the Z9 is announced. Um, I want to know, do you think Nikon has a do you think nikon should make a camera with all of the great video functionalities that's in the z9 and put it into just a dedicated uh camera for people that's into to video because i i want that 8k but i don't want to have an action you know camera like the z9 that's overkill mm -hmm. for me but i will love those great like to be able to shoot internally log I think it does 10 bit if I'm not mistaken. Like I want to have that. I use a Ninja Atomos um, 5 to get mm -hmm. my yeah. 10 bit, you know, um, and to shoot log. If I shoot on my uh, Z62, I shoot in flat. So do mm -hmm. you think they would do that? And Khan, since you are so excited about the Z8, I want you to also tell me what yeah. you want in the Z8. If it's not this, what would you want in that camera? A two-way two question. <laughs> Uh, I let Becky answer first because I think I'm going to rumble for hours on this one. But uh, <laughs> just don't forget it. Yeah, no. I mean, I the the Z9 for me is too heavy as a camera just for a, a day to day camera. I mean, I've shot events with the D850 and found it very heavy with the D4s. Um, I love the size of the Z6, so I would really like a high resolution the z7 ii is probably more than ac en enough for me really if i were to go down that route but i do like the the autofocus system of the z9 i don't need 20 frames per second at all definitely don't need that um i think it would be nice from what i kind of understand from the rumors that i've been hearing we probably won't see anything like that for a long time but i know that con is very excited about the prospect of it yeah. so um i'm probably not the best person to comment because i'm like no i don't think it's gonna happen and he's <laughs> not that way <laughs> yeah well we keep asking nikon on the one z8 question yeah. obviously you know they say it's like you're promoting your movie and you're asking when the sequel is coming out and they <laughs> right. they say well we are here to promote our movie so yeah. i guess we're gonna have a whole year I don't know when we don't have release date, so don't take my word the whole year to milk the Z8 rumor and everything, you know. So, mm. um, from my personal view, you know, I'm, you know, the same. Like I'm, I'm a portrait photographer, so for me, I love the resolution. Mm. You can't have like enough resolution, in my opinion. So if the camera comes out with let's say 80 megapixel, 100 megapixel, I'll eat it, and I know I don't need this, but psychologically, I, I'll get the all the resolution I can get and all dynamic range I can get. Now. My simple math about this is, okay, high resolution camera in Z8 form, yeah, um, we will potentially produce high amount of data, which if we get the same processor, you just need to reduce the frame rate. So therefore we get less frames per second at, at the higher, let's say file size, right. you know, so I don't see why this can't happen. I don't see why they can't fit a lot of Z9 technology in that camera with a new sensor at just a low, um, you know, low frame rate effectively. Mm. Um, the video side of things becomes a little bit tricky because obviously 8K 60 frames per second internal raw is without overheating is quite difficult to achieve the thermals become quite important and the size of the camera becomes quite important so i'm not sure by shaving off the battery pack from z z9 to to, be, to make it z8 if the thermals are going to be affected for video type of work okay. so i'm so you see i'm not 100 sure if z8 will have the same video capabilities as z9 but I hope to be pleasantly surprised on this one so right. uh, but that's my thoughts on z z z8 z a uh, video is let's say let's call it i wish they will make it 
I personally think that unfortunately Nikon is quite a small company, so I don't know if they have enough resources for a dedicated video camera, but I wish they would do it because mm -hmm. obviously Sony released uh, the dedicated video camera, so a Canon has their range. But I wonder how much it will split the audience, but video market is huge. As yourself, you like your 10 bit, you like your, you know, um, the log, log video, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, so you, you, you want that. So, so my question is, do they have enough resources to, you know, to, to release both cameras? Because then we start to look at maybe potential releases of video lenses. I mean, Z lens is already good because they're not, they don't have much focus breathing. Mm -hmm. right. So in terms of this, a lot of Z lenses already out of the box are good video lenses. But then if you start to release a video camera, we may start to think about dedicated line. Uh, so that's where my concern is. But obviously, as you say, the video market is huge. I'm really glad that you are the one who's covering video aspects of the camera because we are more of kind of stills photographers ourselves. Right. So yeah. we don't have enough knowledge from our experience, personal experience to talk about those things. So I'm glad that you are one of those video guys who actually talk about video aspects of Nikon cameras. Yeah. Right. All right, that was it. So I'm gonna shoot one question to you real quick. Just want you to answer it. Nothing long in detail. I want you to tell me what is your favorite lens? And we're gonna end it with with your favorite lens. <laughs> so hard. This is hard, isn't it? Yeah. While you thinking, I'm gonna tell the audience what mine is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go for A it. 105 macro lens. That is my favorite. I don't use it as much as I use my other ones, but to me, it just makes magic. So is it Z mount lens or is it F mount lens? Unfortunately, right now, it is the Sigma <laughs> because the 105, the you know the MC one that yeah. uh, I want it so bad, but it's it's so loud. It's I can never it's get tough, my hands yeah. on it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, just that focal yeah. length is just it's phenomenal to me. I mean, as an uh, in F, F mount range, the 105 1.4 is probably one of my favorite lenses it's of all nice. time. It's absolutely stunning. Um, and I still use a lot of my manual focus AIS and AI glass. My favorite from that range is is actually my 55mm f1.2 AI, which is a really, it's a 1970s lens and it's still nice. stunning. It's not very sharp, wide open. <laughs> um, but in terms of the Z range, it's actually the 51.2, which is huge, such a beast and so expensive. But, yes, uh, yes. but it's really, I mean, it, it's super sharp, wide open. I love I love that lens so much. Yeah, for me, it's H5 1.4 F mount. It's my bread and butter lens. So, yeah, that's the one I use most of the time. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so I want to say thank you all for being here with me. Uh, this was great. Uh, I think both of our audience will really enjoy this. And until the next time, guys, peace. And you. Yeah, thank good you to so talk much. to you, Ryan. Hope <laughs> to talk to you in the future as well. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>